All right, just some quick tips on uh, placement before we look at the constraint side of things. Um, if I was to place some rebars, let's just say I want to put a 32 dome in a bar. Um, I, I want to work in relation to my current plane. And I know I want the bars to become perpendicular to my plane. So, you know, you choose the perpendicular option. And now I can place the bar anywhere I like within my column in this case, or beam, whatever it may be. The interesting part is, and this is part of the relationship side of things, as I move closer to an element, it then becomes sticky to that edge. So you can see um, when I move away, it follows the center. But as I get closer, as soon as I'm there, you can see it sticks to that side. As soon as I go past that other side, it tries to move. It won't in this case because of the cover, but if you had another bar there, it would try and move to the other side of the bar. The other part that's interesting is as you get to the corner, you can see it gets sticky again to the edge, all right? And you can see in both directions, you can fix or hard code the element. You can also move it to be in the middle of the the bar again, right? Or the middle of the, the diameter of the circle, right? So you can either fix it at the tangent points or you can fix it in the middle. And this is particularly uh, very interesting, right? So let's just place the bar somewhere here in the middle. Hit escape. Uh, let's place another rebar. Another option you might do is say, I want two of those bars, not three, two, so that I can choose whether to place them at the tangent point there both at that tangent point or if I come into here I can choose to place them inside of that arc as well right um, and this becomes you know quite interesting um, it's a bit of a game to get it to go where you want it to go but you can see eventually if you move your mouse in the right space click I now got bars that are placed in the right location All right, let's have a look at this individual bar here that's sitting in the middle here, just loose, right? So obviously I can go mess with these uh, figures. That's not a problem. But the other thing I can do is I can actually hit the Edit Constraints button, which gives me a clear definition of where the element is actually linked to, right? So as you can see, I have an orange line here and an orange line here, and between that plane and that plane, or those two lines perpendicular, it's 337 mil apart, right? Now, I know that my column is a 600 by 750 column. So therefore, when I edit the constraints of my bar, I may choose to make this minus 300 to put the bar exactly in that location, right? Um, and at the moment, you can see there's also a toggle which allows me to switch between constraining that element to the face or the, the element to a face of an object or to the cover of an object. So you can space it according to the cover or the actual element itself. If I go and look at the other direction, you can see in this particular case, at the moment, the constraint between this plane and this plane is set up at minus 24, and that's because the clearance is set to be spaced by the centers of the objects. So the distance from that center to that center is 24 mil. So half this bar plus half that bar, you end up with the centers. You can toggle this though. If I choose to toggle this, now the um, offset or the constraint between these two elements is set by the physical um, outer edge of the element, right? So which you can see the offsets changed to zero. The other thing that you have here is you have the ability to adjust your constraint to be in one direction or in two directions, right? Um, let me just put on the two directions and pick OK. So what this means is, is if I grab this bar and I move this bar, and what I'm about to do is not going to make sense, but you'll see what I mean. I move this bar. 
you can see that the uh, ligature in this case is moving with it. Obviously, in this case, this is um, pushing the whole ligature out with it. So in other words, when I move this bar, because it's bidirectionally constrained with this ligature, the ligature is going to move with it. All right. Um, if I undo that, um, if I move the ligature, it's obviously going to move as well because there's already the, cons the constraint for the bar to be constrained in this direction already. All right. If I turn the bidirectional constraint off and pick OK and highlight that bar and move it, you'll notice that the bar moves, but the ligature does not. Um, if you pick the actual bar again and look at the constraint and look in that direction, you'll see the constraint is still there, but the value is now 120 millimeters between the physical size or the outer edges of those objects. So with that, you can actually do some very interesting things. Hopefully that's um, giving you some more light. Okay, again, another example of that. If I was to pick, you see I'm working in this big giant pad footing. I've got some bars that are sitting at the bottom of this particular element, right? So again, I may choose to come and place some rebar in it. Maybe I want to choose a fixed number, 15 mil. My current work plane, I'm going to go perpendicular to the cover. Again, this is just an example, just to show you fit for purpose. Um, uh, techniques, I guess. If you pick the rebar itself, choose the edit constraint, you can see at the moment if I pick this element, it's constrained to the face of that particular bit of geometry, right? I actually want those to be constrained to the center of the bar. I want to keep them physical and I want to keep them bi directional. Now, what that means is, as I said, okay means if I move this bar here, because it's bi-directional, the bars at the bottom move with it, and vice versa. If I move these bars, um, move the bars on the bottom, they move with it as well, right? And this is, this is um, very, very important because obviously when you move this bar, you want that bar to move with it. So making sure that, you know, if I move this element here also, the other one moves with it, right? Or another way to think about it is if I edit the constraints on that element and I say I now want that you know, 150 mil from the bottom, well, rather minus 150 mil, I should say, pick OK, you will see that all the bars move with it, seeing how those relationships are very important to each other. All right, so let's grab this slab here. Let's place a number of bars. Let's go 30 bars. <sighs> Damn fat fingers. There we go. 30 bars at 500. I'm going to put it on the bottom of the slab, parallel to the cover. We come into here and we choose where we're going to place it, right? So we can place it hard up against the cover. We can place it somewhere in between. I know that exactly that's sort of central. You know, it doesn't matter. Let's just place it there, right? Now, the bars themselves, um, first of all, when you select on them, you can turn off the first bar or the last bar using these two items here. So you can see you can turn off the last bar, turn off the first bar. So if you don't, if you've got bars that are overlapping, this sometimes is useful. However, when we edit the constraint of this bar, again, I want to choose this end plane of where my bar finishes. And at the moment, it's constrained to the cover by uh, a zero distance. I want to actually constrain it to the end of the slab. And I want it to go, you know, 500 mil into that next slab. So then regardless of where this slab finishes, this bar will be 500 mil sticking out into that space, right? And this is important. Same scenario goes for the other slab. So let's go and place that uh, rebar in here again. Same settings. 
uh, we're gonna go number with spacing go 500 30 all right and we come into here hit space bar All right, so we place it somewhere, right? Again, we choose the bar, we edit the constraint, and we say this edge here should stay constrained to the, so this center of this bar should stay constrained to the center of this bar. And I want them physically touching each other, right? Um, as opposed to uh, being center to center, right? Um, I also want, um, uh, I can also change the relationship of this item to, instead of being related back to the edge of the cover, which it is at the moment, I can change it and make it relational to the end of that bar, um, you know, uh, if that's something that I want to do. But in that particular case, I'm not going to do that. Pick OK, and you can see that the bars sit beautifully next to each other all the way around. Um, again, it, I could choose, like I said, to con change the constraint of this, make it relation relational back to the end of that bar, and for example, make it, you know, um, a thousand mils, which is then going to poke it 500 mil in there, um, and then whatever happens with this other bar. It will then move. So, for example, if I edit this constraint um, and choose the this one here, and instead of being 500, I want to make it 750. You can see that everything then moves together, meaning that we can lap bars and constrain them in both directions if we so choose to. Personally, I think I want this bar because I pour one slab first, be relational back to the cover. And we want to make that zero and pick OK. And now I'm done.